Hello there! Today's uh, thoughts of no one in particular is partly reaction to a news story, partly my personal story with these bastards. And the attitudes to the disabled and to the unemployed in this country. I um, have a very severe anxiety condition. I have had this since 2005, so that's seven years now. And it means that I really can't live that independently. I have to have people with me going, walking long distances. I have to um, constantly, um, constantly have support getting places and doing things. Um, and this has got me um, two things which are solidly there and not going to be challenged, and that is my disability living allowance, uh, which has just gone up, which is awesome um, for all the good it does, uh, which is a small donation every month that um, is pretty much my only source of income at the moment. Um, and I've got a Freedom Pass, which is a kind of a general public transport pass for people with disabilities to allow them to go to get around and do things without the aid of a, a um, nor what normally would end up in a carer's car. And uh, When it comes to mental health issues, most carers aren't insured to have um, mentally ill uh, patients in their cars. They've got to get special insurance for that, which is fair enough. I'm not blaming the insurance companies for that at all, and I'm not blaming um, any regulation for that at all. It, it's it's got to be there because all it needs is somebody like me to have a panic attack in a car um, and cause a crash, and all sorts of shit hits the fan. Anyhow, that's beside beside the point. Um, Having come out of university, which was, as I've mentioned previously in my video, the university trap, um, complete waste of time, um, and was base I was basically pushed into it. Um, having come out of that with these useless qualifications, I then went on to um, job seekers allowance. Well, first applying for it, uh, you have to call into an automated um, system which um, doesn't recognize well any voice it doesn't recognize my voice my voice is um, well it's not exactly typical of a British voice but it's not that difficult to understand for a human being um, <laughs> but a computer computers can't even understand I, I, I don't want to know what the system at Glasgow has to deal with I mean, that's that's got that's got to break down on a daily basis. Um, but this is a voice recognition bullshit, and it, it it just took me it took me about took me about three hours to get my application in, just calling and recalling and recalling and recalling just to get the fucking thing to recognise my voice. Um, but um, yeah, that went through. Um, Eventually, I was referred to a local job centre, which actually wasn't the local one. It was um, Palmer's Green. Palmer's Green is actually further away than Enfield, but because everything's done by postcode, uh, Palmer's Green was designated as my local job centre, which is bullshit. But anyhow, I was sent there. Eventually, Palmer's Green actually trained up a disability advisor. Um, until then, I was just signing on there and going to a disability advisor at Enfield, uh, where there was a bomb scare. That was cool. Uh, yeah, somebody tried to blow, blow up a job centre. That was fun. Um, and I wouldn't blame them. Um, but anyhow, this this complete idiot newbie uh, to disability um, management who was very rarely there as well. I was supposed to see her every time I signed on. I saw her a total of nine times out of the dozen. Because I dozen, dozen, or, no, sorry, several dozen, um, once every two weeks for a year. Oh, gee, that's 24. 24 visits. Let's just say I went 24 visits. 
That's just a rough guess. I don't know exactly. I saw her a total of nine times. That's how bad their system was. That's how that's how sort of lazy their their employees are. Um, and what was worse was my claim um, was uh, in what it is something of a limbo because I have quite a bit in savings thanks to my rather miserly parents. Um, I have quite a bit in savings, um, and that that's that sort of disqualified me from actually getting anything from the JSA, any actual money. I got a national insurance stamp, which will probably never be paid because um, of the fact I don't intend on living long enough to uh, have a state pension, but that's a sidetrack again. Um, but, um, yeah, the... <sighs> we had this... Um, I, I was getting national insurance stamp, but I wasn't actually getting any money. And um, they weren't helping at all with getting jobs, um, or giving me any advice on where it go that was actually where they, they were constantly referring me to this this broken ass website. Pretty much every website the government has at the moment is so poor. Even even like the, the intelligence services sites are just so sort of buggy and pathetic. It's 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 rather depressing really. Um, but they they were constantly referring to this site and I was constantly telling them it's not working and they were saying, Oh, Ben sent a complaint in. I did send a complaint in, nobody did anything about it. But um and then one guy who I think this was some sort of a mid term assessment, he he turned around and he said, You're not actually getting any money. I said, No. And he says, well, What the fuck are you doing here then? He turned around and he said that to me, What the fuck are you doing here? And I said, I really do not know. I really do not know. I'm, I'm being told I have to come in every two weeks. I'm getting no money out of it. And um, yeah, that wasn't the final straw. That was coming towards the final straw. The final straw was when the the ninth time I saw the disability advisor, she turns up and she says, look, I've tried to argue this, but the new rules are in. You're going to have to come in for a course for the next two years, every every weekday for the next two years. And I was like, the fuck? I've told you I need specialist support, a psychiatric nurse, to be precise, to get me to Palmer's Green every once every two weeks. How the fuck do you expect her to take me down there every day? I mean, she's only got what she's only got two hours a week with me. How can she do that? That's just physically impossible. And she's like, "Well, you have a choice. You can either close your claim, which won't cost you anything because you're not getting any money, or you can go on this course." And I was like, "Well, fuck you then. I'm closing the claim." Um, and I did close the close the claim, and then I stormed out of the building. Margaret, the psychiatric nurse, turned around and said, what, "What's going on?" I explained it to her, and she went storming back in there, saying, "Who's going to pay for this? Who is going to pay for this?" And I was like, "Mark, please just just leave it. We they're they're not worth it." Um, and I, I have a feeling that uh, G four, the G four guy, that's G four, a private company that handles security and a lot of government facilities, and they're very corrupt. Um, he I, he looked like he was about to tase her, so I, <laughs> I sort of said, so come on, let's get out of here. And from that point on, I went full-time with my writing, and I've never looked back. Um, although it doesn't make me any money at all, and it means I'm stuck at home. Uh, I'm living on dwindling savings. Um, I don't care, um, and I will not reapply for the JSA, because... It's it's just too much hassle for me. They don't recognise that I'm pretty much unfit for work. The fact that I can't get anywhere without any without people with me is a massive red flag, and it should have been from the start, uh, frankly. And that's another thing. The way this is another thing that's been reboot is people with severe disabilities are being judged fit to work. A friend of mine. Um, He's more uh, obviously physically disabled. Um, he has trouble walking um, and um, some cognitive problems as well. 
and he's been he's he's been sent off courses and things like that. And he he can barely bloody oh my god, the guy takes um, I mean. Obviously, when when you're walking with him, you you get more conscious of the sort of speed he walks at. But it's so, he, and and you you can feel his pain and his struggling thing. I mean, he he takes it like a real trooper, but you can feel it. It's so so sickening. And um, the poor guy is being dragged to these these things because of the fact that um, the government is has created through the white right wing press this this culture of hatred towards disabled people and um, is now um, exploiting that to force them into these jobs they cannot do and I have no doubt going on to the story now that a lot of the people who were bust in to steward the jubilee were disabled people judged fit for work. I have no doubt at all. And this story, this story is potential to be a massive scandal if, and partic particularly as there is a press embargo on um, uh, certain aspects of the DWP. Uh, press embargoes, of course, do not apply to the internet, thank God. Um, and they um, and there are ways that various papers are finding their way around, like Private Eye uh, and uh, Morning, the Morning Star. God's sake, I'm relying on the fucking commie paper to uh, to get this this word out. But it, it's it's and it's rather sickening. But nonetheless, um, yeah, we had this incident. There a big bunch of. Um, jobless people were bussed to London um, and they were weren't paid at all they were told they were going to be paid um, they were told that if they didn't go they would lose their job seekers allowance not only that they were not accommodated properly they were actually told to sleep under a bridge sleep rough in London we're supposed to have a fucking welfare state. This is this this is sickening even by Victorian standards. Charles Dickens, Charles Dickens wrote Oliver Twist to protest the new poor law, which was creating these workhouses. He didn't get it bloody. He that as effective as that book was, it wasn't dis, it wasn't um, repealed completely until 19, the nineteen fucking fifties, and. Now it's back. The poor, the disabled, they're being forced into this unpaid work. It is slave labour. And most of them didn't have the training for it, so they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. It's a real mess, and it is an indictment on this country. And when we get round to um, the Olympics, I have no doubt there will be more incidents like this. Because of the fact everyone's trying to do everything on the cheap. Why? Bunch of big bunch of uh, corrupt American bankers for a start, but mostly because the whole problem is engineered from the start, from the the antipathy towards disabled. And I've heard stories. I've heard stories of people on crutches who weren't even claiming disability allowance, being beaten up in the street and called scroungers. It's days like this, I don't even want to live on this planet anymore. <sighs> really. It's days like this where I can really, really identify with the sentiments of some really evil people.